Hi everyone, it's Angie from Hello Baby and today I am going to show you how to make the all-purpose puff scrubbies and this pattern is available for free on Ravelry.com. I will put a link in the comments below for you. Now this is one of the scrubbies that I had made previously. This is a great scrap buster project if you have like some cotton laying around or even bamboo yarn. They measure only about four inches across and they're really great for a variety of uses. Everything from cleaning your kitchen, getting into the cracks in the counters, um, washing dishes with. Personally, I use them on my face in the shower with my face wash. The puffs right in here give a nice, soft, gentle feel on my sensitive skin. But the cotton yarn has a great exfoliating feature to it that really helps refresh my face after a long day dealing with the kids and schoolwork and everything else that I have to do. So in order to make this, you're not going to need a whole lot of things. Um, just a little bit of scrap yarn, honestly, is really all you need. Uh, when I make these, a two ounce ball makes about seven or so of them with some left over. And that's when I'm using uh, like lilies and cream, peaches and cream, cotton yarn that you can get at most stores here in the United States. Uh, today I am going to be using, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby. This is a Hobby Lobby exclusive brand. You can only get it there. This is a four weight medium cotton. It is 100% cotton and I like using this because it's nice and soft on my hands. When I use some of the other brands like the Lilies and Cream and the Peaches and Cream, it can be really rough on my skin so I end up working my hands a little raw. The color I'm using is Water Lily and I am also using my H hook right here. This is a five millimeter hook. This is the Furls Odyssey crochet hook from the collection that I have. Um, I really love these hooks. They're nice and balanced. They're, they're very easy to use. They hold really well in the hand and I use a knife hold when I do my crocheting. So what we're going to do is go over the pattern real quick. It's really simple to make and it only takes you a couple minutes. I tend to whip these up in the car line when I am uh, picking my son up from school. Now, the way you start this out, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it with a magic circle, which some people have a little bit of difficulty with, or you can do it with a chain two. So as the pattern is written, I have it as a chain two. So. And when I wrote this pattern, I really couldn't do a magic circle, so that's why. So I'm going to do one, two, and what that's going to do is give me the first chain to work in right here. And I'm going to actually use a stitch marker like I always do and slip that on my working loop so I know where to join when I come around. So working in the first chain that I made, I'm going to do 12 single crochets. So let's see if I can keep this nice and centered on the camera. There's one, two. I haven't picked up a hook in a little bit in a couple days because I've been busy with schoolwork and the kids. So if I'm a little fumbly, I apologize. Three. Four, five, here's six. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around. See, there's my initial knot. I'm going to pull on that a little bit and I'm going to scrunch this so I have more room to work in. Seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I'm 
so this is what it looks like right now doesn't look like much but here is my first stitch right here I'm going to join this round with a slip stitch into the first stitch that I made right like that and then I'm going to chain three one two let me grab another stitch marker real quick and this chain three is going to count as my first double crochet there you go now what I'm going to do in order to increase this round, I'm going to put two double crochets in each of my single crochets that I did in the previously in the previous round. That's going to give me a total of 24 double crochets this round. So I'm going to work where my red stitch marker is. That is the base of my join. And I'm going to put a double crochet here. Sometimes the stitch marker gets in the way a little bit when trying to work and like I said I'm a little fumbly today honestly I haven't had any coffee just oh wait yes I did I got a one of the bottles of frappuccino and I went to the store this morning okay so now I have a double crochet in that first stitch along with my chain three so that counts as two double crochets and now every stitch going around, I'm going to put two double crochets. So there's number three. Now I'm not going to speed up this video. I'm not going to jump and skip. So you are working with me in real time. That way, hopefully you don't have to do a lot of pausing. But the problem with doing that is you get to hear me ramble a lot. Sorry about that. I don't have a whole lot of friends. It's kind of sad to admit, but it's true. You know, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a grad student. Most of my interactions are online on classroom discussion boards for my classes or through Facebook, through uh, various groups that I'm in. And speaking of groups, I do have... A Facebook group that is all things crochet is called Elo Yarnies Crochet Group. And you are more than welcome to come in there, request to join, and just chat about anything and everything yarn and crochet related. Whether that's, you know, you found a really cool pattern by someone that you absolutely love. You want to show off your current work in progress. Or you have questions on techniques or, or tips on you figured out how to do something new i love this kind of post when someone's like hey i just figured this out i didn't know it because you know what nine times out of ten i probably didn't know it too and most of my crochet techniques i learned through various message boards on in groups on facebook or by watching youtube videos like this Though I admit a lot of them I went ahead and, you know, muted or paused or skipped ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, dropped the stitch. Let's pick that back up. So, I'm on my 12th single crochet. So, I'm going to have two double crochets. Now, when I count this, I should have 24 stitches around. Always count before you join when doing things like this so that you can make sure that you have the correct number. Now, also, if your work gets a little wobbly like that, don't worry about it. You can always flatten it out later. Let's see. I'm going to unhook that. Put my finger in there so I don't drop the loop. And we're going to count real quick. So, uh, forget that. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, we have the right amount. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take where our purple stitch marker is that we put around our working loop before we did our third chain. And we are going to join right there in that third 
loop of our chain, chain three at the beginning. So join with a slip stitch. I know there's invisible joins and things that you can do, but for me, it's just easier to do it this way. Now here is what we have so far. This is a pretty color. This color of yarn is called Water Lily. And I grabbed it because it was nice, soft, light colors. And I figured that would make it easier for you guys to uh, see my stitches. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to chain two. And this is going to be our beginning chain. One, two. I'm going to move this red stitch marker from the first round. I'm just going to move it up. Now, there we go. What we are going to do right here where the purple stitch is, we are going to make our first puff stitch. And we are going to put one puff stitch in every stitch around. Now, normally we would be doing increases this round if we were to continue with the double crochets. However, because puff stitches are wider than a normal double crochet, it's going to do a natural increase for us. So I'm going to kind of pull that out a little bit to make that bigger. To do a puff stitch, we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook, go into the stitch, pull up a loop. We're going to wrap a second time, go into the stitch, pull up another loop. Now I have one, two, three, four, five stitches on my loop, or on my hook rather. And I'm going to wrap a third time, go into the stitch, wrap, pull up another loop, now I have seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to pull through, working with cotton yarn that can get a little splitty. You gotta be careful. I'm gonna pull through, okay? And that is my puff stitch, all right? Now, I am not going to chain one after that. Some tell you, sometimes you do a puff stitch, it'll tell you to chain one. I'm not going to do that. I'll show you why on the next round. So I'm going to do another puff stitch in the next double crochet. Right like that. And then just keep going around. As you put the puffs in, you'll notice your double crochets are kind of pulling at the top. That's okay. Because as you can see on these, when you're done, you're not really going to notice that pulling at all. This one is made with the I Love This Cotton also. You've got a little bit of gapping there, but that's okay. Once you start washing it and using it, you're not going to notice that. So I'm going to go ahead and do another. I'm going to move a little faster. If you don't work this fast, don't worry about it. Great thing about a video is you can slow it down. Oops. Got caught in the yarn. There we go. One two times in the stitch, three times in the stitch. Got my seven loops, I'm gonna pull up. One, two, three. One of the issues I'm gonna show you real quick that I tend to do when I'm doing puffs and I'm moving too fast is sometimes I drop a stitch Let's see if I actually do it. When I'm thinking about it, I don't do it. But sometimes, like, this will slip off. And it'll wrap around the bottom of your puff. You gotta just kind of be mindful of that. 
or like if you pull through like that, see how it's wrapped around the bottom? You don't want that. So, one, two, three. I am most well, about halfway done with this round. The great thing about this pattern is it is only four rounds. Two, three, four. So, okay, I do have seven loops. So like I said, it is super quick. I think we're only at like the 15 minute mark. And we are over halfway done with this. And I'm moving a little slower than I normally would. And this pattern is really great for you know, like quick gifts. One, two, three, four, five. Like make a whole bunch of them and uh, bundle them up for teacher gifts. You know, as a spa day, a gift basket. I, when I make a whole bunch of them, I send them to my mom. She does craft fairs in the San Angelo, Texas area. And I'll let her sell bundles of them and just, you know, pay me back whenever she does sell them. Kind of give her a little commission off of it most of the time. And then I also like to do these, honestly, just for my own use. <laughs> I have a bunch of them, and like I said, I use them in the shower. And I absolutely love washing my face with them. Because they're, unlike the, the disposable pads, I mean, they're reusable. They're, they're eco-friendly. They're, just throw them in the washer with, on hot water. And dry them with your towels. And when you go to fold up your towels, if you fold your towels, personally, I have so many kids and so many, you know, things to do that my laundry usually ends up heaped up on a counter in my laundry room or in my bedroom, which has kind of become the catch-all of the house. That's neither here nor there. Um... And just keep them in with your makeup. You can use them with your makeup remover. You know, you're you're really only limited by what the cotton itself can withhold. If you get a nice, strong, durable, 100% cotton like this is, you really don't have to worry about any, any issues as long as you uh, weave in the ends nice and tightly and all of that. You're really not going to have to worry about them unraveling. At least personally, I've, I've been making these for, oh gosh, almost two years now. And I've never had one of them fall apart on me. And I like using them to, to scrub out the corners of my oven or, or my stove top. And of course, I have separate ones for my face and ones for my appliances. Don't get those confused. You don't want those kind of chemicals on your face. Oven cleaner, no. Don't be like that girl on TikTok with the Gorilla Glue. It's not, not advisable. Okay, so we've got 24. Now, do you see how this is kind of curling? That's okay. Because you can always straighten it out. And cotton is nice and stretchable. And then when you weave in your ends... I do recommend on this inside tail that you use it to weave in the middle here and pull that hole closed. Now, I wish I had some of these that were completely done with the ends woven in, but as soon as I weave in the ends, I, I tend to use them. So uh, they're probably in my laundry right now. Okay, so I have 24 puffs now. I'm going to take that out real quick and count them. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and this one right here is twenty-four. So now we have twenty-four puffs. I'm gonna slip that back on my hook. And next we are going to do our fourth and final round. And then the optional finishing touches. Okay, so 
I'm going to go ahead and join to the top of that first puff. Now remember how I said we were only doing a chain two. Now you're going to see that chain two right there. That's okay. But because that's not a stitch, it kind of gets squished. And where you are actually joining to is the top of the puff. So we are going to join that with a slip stitch. And then we are going to chain one for our turning chain. I'm going to move my stitch marker so that I don't end up losing that first stitch. And I am going to do two single crochet all the way around. And that is going to give me 48 single crochet. So, because 24 times two is 48. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna remove this red stitch marker so it doesn't get in my way in this round. I tend to leave them in so I don't lose them. I always know where it is, but right now it's getting in my way. So here is one, two single crochet. Now the top of your puffs, if you look at the top, see if I can get this to focus. Uh, there we go. It, it makes this slight little V, just like a regular stitch. That V right there is where you're going to put your stitches. Okay. Don't bring them down into here or anything like that. You'll pull your puffs apart. You really don't want to do that. It'll just kind of look weird, I think. So I'm going to do two single crochet all the way around. Let's see. One, two. And however you count that, you know, just to make sure you don't miss any. Um, if you do, it's going to pucker your work to one side or the other because it's not going to increase out correctly. But doing the single crochets, if you look, it gets just a nice finishing edge on it. If you do only one single crochet in each puff, it's going to kind of bowl it, give it, you know, or give it like a bowl shape like that. We don't want that. Now these, because they're more utility than they are decoration, they don't really need to be perfectly flat. They don't need to be perfectly straight or anything like that. If they look a little wonky, unless you're selling them or, or giving them away, or you're just a perfectionist, like I can be sometimes, it really doesn't matter if they're a little wonky or, or if they're a little bold or anything like that. But you, you might want a nice presentation to it. I've never used this cover of yarn before. The, the pinks on it are really pretty. And if you, you know, you saw the yarn in the beginning, it had all sorts of different colors on it. It has some yellows, some blues, some pinks kind of mixed in. Drop my line. And it looks like we haven't even got into any of the other colors. I mean, that's how little of this yarn we're actually using. And being able to get about seven of them from a two ounce ball I mean that gives you one for every day of the week oh there's a little bit of blue coming in that's real pretty I like that I'm almost I'm over halfway through and if you use the same yarn to make an entire set and keep the set together, you'll be able to see the transitions of colors from one scrubby to the next. All right. I am almost done. I've got a couple more to go. Well, a few more. got three more puffs so we're gonna have three more stitches and then 
Let's see more stitches to work in rather. Move my yarn out a little bit. Okay, yes, I did two in that one. Okay. Now we've got I'm gonna count this real quick. I know there's one stitch left here to work. But I'm going to show you something. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. I want to show you this. So, our final count for this row should be 48. And if you notice right there, there looks like there's a whole nother stitch on top of that puff. Now, that is actually the slip stitch that we used to join. Because these are for your personal use, you have the option to either work additional stitches in there or not. If you work additional stitches in there and end up with 50, it really is no big deal. However, you may end up with some issue with it laying flat. Okay? That is a personal preference. I tend not to work in that space. And when you join with your slip stitch you don't really tell right there is that space you can't really tell that there's nothing in there it's not wrong to work in that space for this pattern but it's not right either if that makes sense i hope i'm explaining that right so now we have 48 single crochet now you can just go ahead and tie it off and call it done. Personally, I like to put a little finishing touch on it. And that finishing touch is this little loop right here, right there. That way I can hang them in the shower. Now you can make this loop however long or short you want to make it. I like to do a chain 15. That gives me a nice size. And what I do is I hang it on the pump of my face wash for when I'm going to use it. If you want it longer, just chain more. If you want it shorter, chain less. Simple as that. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. And I slipped my hook again. There we go. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. And instead of working right here where this is. I'm actually going to work this into the join. Which is let's see this space right here see there's the join right here this is where I joined it to so I'm gonna work it into the slip stitch of the join the pattern doesn't say to do that it says just to work it into the first chain but this works it around the chain and I'm just gonna do a slip stitch right there and the reason I prefer that is it kind of gives more of a teardrop shape to this there so I did my slip stitch and then I'm just gonna pull and knot it and use my pretty pink scissors snip that pull that out take my stitch marker off my cat is being a spaz in the background so you probably hear her jingle bell and look at that. We have an all-purpose puff scrubby with a little 
hangy loop all done and we're ready for the ends to be sewn in since this video is already about 30 minutes long I'm not gonna bore you with that part I'm just gonna show you again this should measure somewhere around four inches or so uh, you can really use any size hook you want for this you can use any size yarn I personally prefer a worsted weight uh, for medium weight or thinner if you are using a thinner yarn or if you um, need to find your stitches too tight or too loose you know obviously adjust your hook sizes accordingly but there you go one completed all-purpose puff scrubby voila don't forget to hit subscribe at the end of this video and um, give us a follow and a like on Facebook and all of our social media if you want access to our entire design library of patterns then become a supporter on patreon at patreon.com slash lobabycrochet until next time bye